Okay. Welcome everybody to the June TDL member forum. Happy solstice. Hope you're staying cool. It is uh, very much summer, at least here in Austin. My name is Christy Park. I'm the executive director of the Texas Digital Library. I hope everybody's having a great week so far and, and glad you're all here. As we gather um, in this shared virtual space, we'll start as we usually do by acknowledging the physical places from which we join, all, all located on the indigenous lands of Turtle Island, the ancestral name for what is now called North America. Our staff at TDL work all over Texas and outside of Texas. I'm joining from Austin where the Tonkawa were among the traditional stewards of the land before their forcible removal. And I invite you to share your own land acknowledgements in chat if you'd like to. We'll put a link there where you can learn more about the lands of indigenous people in your area. Okay, we'll follow our usual agenda. And I, I, men, I mentioned before, I'm joined by our deputy director, Courtney Muma, in providing updates today. I'll start with a couple of uh, director updates, starting by welcoming several new users um, of our Texas data repository. So Southern Methodist University, the uh, UT Health Science Center at San Antonio, and UT Southwestern Medical Center have all recently joined the TDR to support their faculty needs for publishing and, and curating research data. Courtney Muma, who manages that service, has been very busy onboarding all these new users to that service and to the TDR steering committee, and we're just thrilled to have them on board and hope this will be a, a great resource for their institution and, and researchers there. Next up, I want to let everybody know um, that we have an open position for an outreach and member engagement coordinator to help promote the programs and benefits of the TDL through outreach, communication efforts, and coordination of our member communities. The person in this position will play an integral role in coordinating and supporting our vibrant community of member groups. Uh, by producing content for our website and promotional channels and coordinating events, including the Texas Conference on Digital Libraries. So I hope um, folks will consider applying for the position if it interests you and to please share the posting widely with your networks. If you have any questions about it, um, you can get in touch with me. I'd be happy to talk with folks about it and answer any questions that I'm able to. We'll post a link in chat to that posting uh, so you can share it out. And speaking of TCDL, I cannot believe it's already been over a month since many of us uh, gathered in Austin for the first in-person Texas Conference on Digital Libraries in three years. It was really wonderful uh, to be with so many of you at that event and to take in all the great opportunities for learning and connection. From our keynote speaker, Sophia Lung's call to consider the ways that white supremacy must be deconstructed within the library profession and libraries themselves, to the uniformly excellent presentations from the members of our community on the digital library and archives work and, and research that you're doing, we felt that the event was a a really successful return to its roots as a as a face to face community gathering and a and a high quality professional development opportunity. So thank you all for being there and making it happen. It was a time when we got to acknowledge and honor our TDL awards recipients uh, pictured here. Um, they were Hong Pham Vu from UT Arlington Libraries, Colleen Lyon at UT Austin. Monica Flores and Karen Kocher from the Barton Creek Timestream Project, Kartik Mann at GRA at UT Arlington, Alyssa Guzman from UT Austin, Mingyu Chen from UT Dallas, and the Digital Strategies and Innovations team at Texas Women's Libraries. It was really great to honor them. 
and finally, TC Dale was also just a great time to gather and network and, and ask each other the question um, in our theme, hi, how are you? After three years apart for many of us. So many of our user groups met in person for the first time in years. Many of you who we've been working with virtually for several years, we got to meet um, face to face for the first time. And that was really special and, and fun. And um, it was great to to connect and learn from and with all of you. Obviously, all of it was possible because of the TCDL planning committee, many of them, though not all of them are pictured here. Um, and I will not read through all the names again, but I do want to give a special shout out to our chair, Christina Kellum from UNT and Vice Chair Diane Lopez from UTSA. Diane will um, take the baton as chair for next year's planning committee and we're meeting soon later this month to get started on that so that's pretty exciting. Our post-conference committee is working hard to look at the results of our post-conference survey and provide those to next year's planning committee and they're also working to publish presentations from the conference in the TDL repository. We'll also have a few blog posts in the pipeline that will appear on our website over the next uh, few weeks, so you'll have the opportunity to revisit some of those conference experiences. All right. So next up, we're going to move into our services and projects updates, and we're mixing up the order a little bit, and we'll start with Courtney's updates on DPLA and digital preservation services, so I'll hand it over to her. Hey, everybody. Um, good to be here. It is incredibly hot. Um, <laughs> So we're going to start with a digital preservation update. Um, recently, y'all, I just got back uh, Saturday from a trip to Athens, Georgia, where I was honored to deliver the plenary talk for the Best Practices Exchange Conference um, at the University of Georgia. Um, and I've shared the full text of that talk on the TDL blog, so Christy will share that link if any of you are interested in reading it. Um, it's about... Uh, basically mentorship as the future of digital preservation. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. And I'm very pleased to have been able to do that. Um, next up from uh, the DPLA hosting at TDL, our text hub that we share with UNT, um, we've actually put together a DPLA local site, which is now live, and I wanted to make sure you were all aware of it. You can visit texas.dp.la to search all the collections that have been contributed from Text Hub partners at both TDL and the Portal to Texas History. Um, so one place to go to see all of the Text Hub partners um, that we hope obviously to continue to grow. And Christy's also shared that link for you in the chat. Um, Next up, some service updates from Virio and the TDR. So um, for the Virio, I'm sorry, I'm adding people <laughs> as they come in. Um, so Texas A&M has now completed five, that's right, folks, five sprints that have markedly improved Virio 4. Um, Frank Smutniak, our lead developer at TDL on Virio, continues refining the upgrades that we've done so far and is working towards creating calendars for migrating remaining members once we get those upgrades that exist refined to a point where everybody's happy. Um, speaking of Frank, uh, who is with us today, he's temporarily changing his hours to 20 per week until December 1st. So please be patient as we do our best to manage your help desk questions and continue rollouts. I did send a message to the Vireo um, listserv for the TDL hosted members, but I just wanted to make sure to get that out there to everybody and anyone who might have missed that post. Next up for research data management, um, the Texas Data Repository Steering Committee got together at TCDL for its annual meeting where Laura Sayre of Texas A&M University took over chair duties from our outgoing chair, Matthew McInery of Texas Tech University. Um, I saw that great picture Christy shared in the group slide of the TDR Steering Committee and I hadn't seen that one yet either. <laughs> Um, the TDR steering committee also reviewed usage data um, during the meeting and set their strategic priority areas for the coming year, and those are now data retention, 
sensitive data, and larger data management. And so those are going to be the focus areas um, in addition to the regular work that the TDR does on behalf of um, the service. Next up, Christy is going to update us on both DSpace and OJS. OK, thanks, Courtney. So a lot going on with DSpace right now. Um, and I'll try to give a, a brief update here and invite folks to our next DSpace user group meeting on June 27th, where we're going to be talking in, in some more depth about this. But I do want to let you know DSpace 7 upgrades have begun to TDL hosted repositories. We've started with um, TDL's own repository. So the one that's at tdl-ir.tdl.org. It is now in production in version seven. And we've been kind of watching it and tweaking it and making sure we have a, um, appropriate resources, Amazon computing resources given to it to make it perform uh, as expected in this new version. So we're going to be beginning upgrades to member repositories at the start of July, starting with Angelo State and UT Southwestern Medical. And we're starting, you know, a little bit slow with these upgrades, and then we're going to be accelerating the pace as we go. We want to make sure that, um, you know, things are working well, and um, we've tweaked the processes and the resources as necessary uh, before we schedule the remainder of the upgrades. So that's the that's the status for now. Um, Nick Woodward, our lead DSpace um, developer, is leading that project, and I'll be providing updates um, to the DSpace user group at our meeting on June 27th, as I, as I said. I'll also note that our DSpace 7 Upgrades Task Force has developed uh, documentation, which it presented at TCDL. Um, and which we'll put a link to in chat. Ima Adwak, our uh, resident digital librarian, was instrumental in creating that documentation um, with contributions from, from the rest of the task force as well. Um, so yeah, please come to that, that DSpace user group meeting on June 27th. In addition to, to discussing the upgrade process, we're also conducting a good bit of administrative business right now. Um, we're voting to elect a new vice chair, chair elect for next year. So if you haven't voted already, go look for an email from Alexa Height from earlier this week where you can um, cast your vote by June. Let's see, June 23rd, I believe is right. Okay, moving on to OJS. Our OJS user group just recently revised and updated its charter, and that is now published on the wiki. And they also selected a new vice chair, Kristen Van Deest from Texas State University, who will become the chair next year. So thank you to Kristen. Our next meeting is July 6th at 10, and we'll be discussing and, and deciding on uh, kind of our next projects and goals for the group for the remainder of the year and, and moving into 2024. So it's a great meeting to join if you aren't already in the habit of doing so. We'd love to have all of our OJS users present participating and thinking about what will most benefit the community around OJS and taxes. So I think that's it for my updates on services, and I'm going to pass it back over to Courtney for a couple of community updates to wrap us up. And I'm back. Hi, folks. <laughs> so first, let's start with open educational resources at TDL. Um, we hope that all the OER folks will join us for our quarterly OER meeting, which has been rescheduled from March where Gabby Hernandez from UT Rio Grande Valley and Sabrina Davis from Texas Tech University will lead a discussion on approaches to planning OER activities for the academic year. Following presentations from them, we'll then invite guests to share their own calendars, planning tools, and other resources, and also ask questions um, and have a good conversation. That meeting is open to all, so please share it widely but registration is required. And Christy has shared that link for us in the chat. 
some more community updates about our upcoming member meetings. Uh, just a reminder that all of these meetings that you see here are free and open to anyone, and you're always welcome to invite your campus partners and non-TDL member colleagues in your network to join us. Um, they're always welcome. Um, Christy will share a link to the sign up for listservs where all of our member groups share information about upcoming meetings and share resources. Um, we also have the what's happening in July um, up on our website. And so you can take a look at that as well. And that's it from me. I'm going to hand it back to Christy. Awesome. Thanks, Courtney. We were very efficient today. So um, if you have uh, questions, we do have some time for questions, or if you have an announcement that you want to share or other news, um, we'd love to hear that as well. You can put um, questions in the chat box or unmute yourself, raise your hand, and, and we'll um, call on you. And while you're thinking about that, I'll just um, remind everybody that uh, if you have a question or suggestion for TDL that you want to um, submit anonymously, you can do that through our feedback form. Um, Courtney has put a link to that in chat. It's also here on the slide. Um, and we would love to hear those questions and suggestions, and we'll do our best to address them in whatever format um, is appropriate and that you would want us to do. <clears throat> I am not seeing typing. Oops. Ah, Susan. <clears throat> well, first off, I'll just note John's comments um, praising a &M for the Vireo sprints. I will echo that for sure. They have been doing really great um, work in collaboration with other members of our community to really <clears throat> fix some bugs, squash bugs, and make some accessibility improvements um, that uh, were asked for in our audit of the Vireo interface last year. So uh, that's producing some that, that work has really been producing some good outcomes. And Courtney mentioned our product owner, Chris Starcher from Texas Tech, who's been really instrumental in that work too. Uh, I see Susan has a question about the DSpace. Is the DSpace user group Slack the best place to ask DSpace questions? That's a great question. I think it is a good place to ask questions, Susan. Um, and it's a good reminder to everybody that we do have a DSpace channel in Slack um, for those questions and discussion. Um, not everybody is on that Slack channel. And so I, I'm not sure the community is is completely used to like checking Slack and using Slack for those discussions yet. So my recommendation would be to ask the question to the DSpace user group listserv. Um, and recently we've had a number of questions come across that list and it's generated a lot of discussion. And so I think that's those are the that's probably the best way to get lots of discussion around a question if you're comfortable for uh, doing it. But the the Slack is another another option. Yeah, let me let me see if I can, I'm not sure I'll be able to grab the um, the uh, URL for that right away, um, Susan, but I can send it to you um, separately after the meeting. And if anybody has questions about how to join that list, um, uh, you, can, you can get in contact with me. It may be that one of the links Courtney shared out. Yeah, I'm going to reshare the link to um, has that to get access to any of the listservs or groups. Um, that list right there. And then thank you, Denise um, Rogers just yes. shared the address for that list as well. Yep. And you do have to be a member of that email list in order to send to it. So I mean, it's it's not hard to um, join that list, but you can't just anonymously send a question to it. All right. Any other questions? Okay. 
we'll wrap it up for today. Thank you everyone for joining us. I hope everybody's having a, a good summer and continues to have a good summer. We'll meet again um, next month, same time, same place, and look forward to seeing you then, if not sooner. Bye everybody and take care. Bye y'all, stay cool. <laughs>